In today's video, I will show you the best ultimate Valby build in the first Descendant. So in this build guide, we will look into the best weapons and modules that you want to get. Then I will explain every single skill and show you the best reactor and external components and what exactly will give us insane 741k damage and much more. So if this sounds interesting to you, then let's get right into it. So our new Ultimate Valby build is insanely powerful because we will use a specific module setup in combination with just one single weapon. And right now, this combination is just too overpowered. If you thought that the normal Valby was good for farming, then what I will show you with the Ultimate version will definitely surprise you. So let's take a look at our modules. And for the first one, we have the Hydro Pressure Bomb that instantaneously compresses our character's body's moisture to leap high into the air, then strike the ground with the energy of a vertical fall, causing the Archie moisture to burst. Then mid-air maneuvering, which modifies the grappling hook to be cast mid-air. However, it can only be used once, and charge time increases by 20%. It also increases our max module capacity, then Emergency Measures, which increases Skill Critical Hit Rate by 16%, and Skill Critical Hit Damage by 7%. Then Front Lines, that increases Skill Critical Hit Damage by plus 16%, and Skill Critical Hit Rate by 7%. Then Fusion Specialist, which increases our Fusion Skill Power Modifier by 19%. Then Skill Concentration, that increases Skill Critical Hit Damage by plus 14%. Then Non-Attribute Specialist, which increases Non-Attribute Skill Power by 20%. And finally, Skill Insight, that increases Skill Critical Hit Rate by 14%. So overall, our main goal with this setup is to make our abilities as powerful as possible while reducing their cooldowns, so we could spam them a lot and do high damage. Then next up, let's take a look at the best weapons and mods that we should use. And as our build primarily focuses on skills and just one powerful weapon, so I recommend to only use the first weapon and then the other two are your personal preference. So for our one and only weapon, we want to use the Divine Punishment, which is an ultimate weapon that triggers three different buffs like increased defenses, lower skill cooldowns or increased weapon damage. The way we can get this weapon is by getting all four materials, which is one Divine Punishment Polymer Syncidium, one Divine Punishment Synthetic Fiber, one Divine Punishment Nanotube Blueprint, and one Divine Punishment Blueprint. All of them you can farm in many locations, but the best spots that I found were the Intercept Battles on Hard Mode and the Echo Swamp Zone called the Seed Vault Operation Dungeon. Finding all of the materials for Divine Punishment will require lots of different farming because the four items themselves do not drop from missions like some other ultimate materials do. Instead, you will need first of all collect amorphous material patterns and then use them at the end of Colossi fights for a chance at the crafting piece you need. Therefore, this will take more time to gather all the required materials than other weapons. And then when you get the Divine Punishment, we want to use mods like the Better Concentration, for critical hit damage increase by 9%, then better insight, for increased critical hit rate by 10%, then weak point sight, for increased weak point damage by 10% but reduced accuracy by 5%, then weak point aiming for increased accuracy by 8% and weak point damage by 2%, then fire rate up for increased fire rate by 6%, then rifling reinforcement for increased ATK by 12%, and finally, the action and reaction for increased weapons ATK by 15% and recoil by 5%. As for most weapons, we use the mods to increase our weapons damage and because of our unique ability that gives us a bunch of buffs, so a lot of times you will see the crazy 100k to 200k crits every second or so. But of course, these numbers will be different for every player depending on your level, weapon upgrades, modules, and how high or low your reactor is. Last but none the least, let me show you how can you upgrade your weapons. So when you craft it, you will start at level 1, but by using the repair station workbench and by dismantling all the other weapons that you don't use, you will be able to upgrade it. So that's why I recommend to break down your useless weapons rather than selling them, because credits are way easier to earn than materials. So keep getting materials and upgrading your weapon. And then on top of that, you can even use the weapon readjustment mechanic, which allows you to use the workbench to re-roll your weapon stats. Moreover, you can re-roll all of your stats at once. 
or lock individual stats you like and only re-roll the ones you want to change and the stats we want to get are crit damage, crit rate, ATK increase, and weak point damage. And finally, the last third way to improve our weapon is by leveling up our unique ability. So each ultimate weapon comes with a unique ability that gives it a powerful effect and you can enhance the power of these abilities. However, unlike weapon transmission and weapon readjustment, there is no unique crafting material you will need to create and use. So to enhance a unique ability, you will just have to craft a duplicate. Then, take that level 1 duplicate to the workbench and sacrifice it to upgrade your unique ability to a stronger version, and it's that simple. So then, next up, let's go over to the best reactor and external components. So, your reactor is a very important item that determines your skill damage and can also include extra modifiers that buff certain aspects of your build. I recommend prioritizing using a reactor with the highest skill power and sub-attack power. Specifically, my best drop that I got is this materialized phase reactor with this weapon condition. So as you can see, I'm still farming for a better condition that would work with my current SMG. And then as for your external components, they are even more of an RNG, at least until you've played the game for long enough to find basically every possible combination with good stat roll. For our build specifically, I recommend the Annihilation Processor for increased max HP. And as we have all four set pieces, so we get plus five, 7% skill duration and our weapons ATK increases when we are lower than 50% HP. Then next up, we have the Annihilation Auxiliary Power that increases our max shields. Then Annihilation Sensor for increased defenses. And lastly, the Annihilation Memory for even more max HP. And finally, Let's quickly take a look at our skills and when we should use them. The first passive ability is called Water Intake, which, when using skills while standing on water, she consumes less mana. Then our first active ability is called the Bubble Bullet that bounces a bubble bullet forward to create a small puddle. Enemies in the small puddle take continuous damage and are inflicted with laundry. Primarily, we rely on this skill for damage and status effects. Moreover, it makes enemies vulnerable to electricity and chill, and it's useful for playing with a bunny build or others who are buffed by those elements. Then the second one is Plop Plop Ability, which creates a large puddle where she is standing and then dives in. Valby then pops out, and enemies in that range take continuous damage and are inflicted with laundry. This skill can be used as an escape mechanism, debuff tool, and charging gap closer. What makes Plop Plop power? is the water that's left behind as you activate the skill and continue to do damage over time. Moreover, this also triggers an electrical and chill resistance decrease, which is perfect for a party composition with Bunny and Viesa. Then cleanup, which makes Valby become liquefied. While liquefied, she cannot take her feet off of the ground or use skills, but she can move through enemies and her movement speed and defense are increased. When moving while liquefied, she creates a path of water that deals continuous damage to enemies and inflicts laundry. This skill acts as a mobility tool, debuff, speed boost, and defensive increase. You can move through enemies, which is a big bonus, but you cannot use skills. Therefore, you can use this to charge in and debuff enemies or escape a situation where you're taking too much damage. Moreover, you can skate through enemies to debuff them and then turn around for a laundry bomb if your skill is active. And finally, we have the laundry bomb that changes the weapon equipped for the launcher. When the launcher is fired, a bomb is created, pulling in enemies inflicted with laundry and dealing continuous damage. The best way to use it is to debuff enemies with the laundry status effect and then only dropping the bomb when they are debuffed. The base damage is weak, but it can ramp up to 200% and it has a traction radius of eight meters. This is your AOE nuke that you wanna use in conjunction with others when enemies are debuffed. And that's about it. So with that said, I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or feedback, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you are doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification belt. So this way you could support the channel and not miss any more amazing content. With that said, you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next one. So take it easy. Peace.